everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts, and today I'm going to be creating two slimline hot foil cards using some Scrappy Tales products. I'm going to be using the uppercase and the lowercase hot foil old English letters. For the lowercase, I'm also going to pull in the coordinating dies. And we're going to get started by ink blending for both cards. I want one card to be pink and one to be like blue and green. So I'm going to start with the pink, and I recently purchased some more Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to be using Spun Sugar and Victorian Velvet for my pink card. And I have a scallop stitch rectangle slimline die that I plan on die cutting from this watercolor panel that I'm blending on. So I'm using it as a guide to make sure that I'm not over blending because I do want to use the bottom portion of that paper for my second card. So I'm starting with the edges and then I'll go ahead and blend the center. I will have another panel on top of this one so I don't really need a perfect blend. You're only going to see the edges of this die peeking through. But I am going to blend in the center because I plan on die cutting some butterflies from the center of this panel. And because I'm going to have something on top of it, you're not even going to know that I die cut the center. So as you can see, this is not a really great blend. Both colors kind of merged into their own pink color, so there's not a whole lot of variation. But I do like how it came out. I'm going to splatter some water onto this and pick it up with a paper towel. And because I'm using watercolor paper, that is going to bleach the areas where the water hit. Then I'll take my scallop stitch rectangle along with some butterflies from the Fairy Silhouettes die set by Scrappy Tails. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on my second card panel. So I'm going to use two new Distress Oxide inks for me. Speckled Egg and Bundle, no, Ugh, I can't think of the other one, Shabby Shutters I think maybe. And while I am ink blending here, I do want to mention that if you haven't yet already subscribed to the Scrappy Tales YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate if you would do that. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers and I will do a giveaway. Um, once we hit that number and my husband also said that if I hit it, he will do a voiceover for one of my videos and I think that would be really funny. So yeah, if you can like this video as well, that helps the algorithm and uh, lets YouTube know to promote it to other people. And also leaving comments helps as well. All right, so that is that panel. Because I use two different color families, it's um, not blending as much as the two pink colors that I used. So I really like how this one turned out. Again, I'm going to splatter some water with my paintbrush, pick up the excess with a paper towel, and then again use that same scallop stitch rectangle to cut that out. And then from the center of this panel, I'm going to die cut a viney leaf from the Assorted Leaves die set. This one is very popular in the shop right now, and I did restock it. So I'm only going to use that one leaf for this card, but I do really like the other long viney leaf. That would be pretty. So currently in my stash, I only have 6x6 six six pattern paper. So I'm going to have to cut two 6x6 six six papers in order to get one slimline panel. So that's what I'm doing for both cards. For the green and blue card, I went with like a burlap textured pattern paper. And then for the pink one, I found a really pretty dark pink paper. So I'm just cutting both panels at once and then I'm going to have to glue them on top of each other. So there is a seam that you see there but the majority of it's going to be covered by my letters and my embellishments. Okay, so the only other thing I wanted to add to both of these cards were some small white flowers. So I have the Layering Daisies die set here by Scrappy Tails, and I'm only going to cut the smaller petals. So I'm kind of selectively placing my cardstock. 
so that I only cut the smaller dies. I also cut the centers from gold mirror cardstock. So both cards are going to have gold foiled letters. I went with matte gold. I really like that um, because it's more of a metallic and it's not super shiny. So for one of my cards, I'm going to spell out you are beautiful and the other one, thank you friend. So I am using my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine and Spellbinders Matte Gold Foil for this. I'm starting with my uppercase letters. I like to do them separately because the uppercase has more detail, so I want to make sure I'm not overfoiling or underfoiling, if that makes sense. Alright, so here are the lowercase letters that I just arranged on my glimmer machine. I don't really count down the timer. I pretty much lay them down, wait five seconds, put my foil on top, wait five seconds, and then run it through. And that seems to work out okay for me. So I have my very large Spellbinders Platinum machine here. And it's a little bit difficult to film, but... As you can see, it does a really great job applying the pressure to the foil, and I do not get really any overfoiling. Okay, so for my lowercase letters, I'm going to cut them out with the coordinating dies, and then the uppercase letters come with two squares that will cut them out, but I want to cut these right up to the line, so I'm just using my scissors, and that's a very simple fussy cut, but I am going to use those two squares from the die set to back behind the letters I just cut, which I'm showing here. So I'm going to layer two white squares on top of each other and then the fussy cut foiled letter. That's going to leave a little white border all the way around. And then for my lowercase letters, I'm going to add two white die cuts behind each letter. And that's going to add a little bit of dimension. I did cut the extra white die cuts from 110 pound white cardstock and I find that two layers is just enough for my liking. Sometimes I do three. So I'm not going to show you me gluing all of these. I just wanted to show you a couple. All right, so I'm going to start with my pink panel and I'm going to glue my pattern paper onto my scalloped ink blended panel first. So here you can see that larger piece, I'm going to have to overlap the shorter one. I really should invest in some 12 by 12 paper or there's even slimline paper now on the market. So I have to check that out, but you can try to use your six by six. You have to be a little bit clever on how you're going to hide the seam. And for me, I didn't completely hide it, but it's not super noticeable. So I thought it was okay. All right. I am now laying out my letters. You can see the uppercase does the inverse, whereas the background is foiled and the actual letters themselves are the cardstock that's showing through. So I like that it's kind of the opposite of the lowercase letters, so it kind of pops more. So I like this placement. I'm going to go ahead and glue everything down. And for both of these cards, I really wanted the custom sentiments to be the main focal point. So I'm not going to do much else to these cards. They were really quick and simple to put together. And I think they just turned out lovely. And when you look at this font, you might think more fairy tale or medieval, but these cards are just pretty, um, just feminine cards that don't have a particular theme to them. So I am layering up my daisies now. I am adding two flowers on top of each other and I'm using the palm of my hand to pop up the petals. And then I have my butterflies and you saw that some of them I cut from the ink blended panel and some I cut from gold mirror cardstock. And the reason I went with the more matte gold foil is because it's almost a complete match to my gold mirror cardstock. So everything looks very cohesive. So I'm going to add the centers to my little daisies and then just fill in the blank areas with all of my butterflies. 
And if you don't have butterflies or leaves, you can definitely substitute with flowers or hearts, bubbles, you can do like an ocean theme, stars, you can do a galaxy background, I've been doing those a lot lately. So I feel like you can really get creative with your custom sentiment and then fill it with whatever images you have that are fairly small. All right, so I glued all of those down. I'm going to take my slimline card base, and I always make my slimline cards eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. A lot of slimline dies on the market are eight and a half by three and a half, so I do like to have that white border all the way around. And that will complete my first card. Okay, so for the second one, I I'm going to first glue down that burlap pattern paper covering up all the little holes that I cut with that leaf die. And then I'm going to grab my letters and this is going to spell out you are beautiful. And um, you can use these letters, letters in general, stamps, dies, whatever. They're great to have in your stash because you can add personal names to your cards. So I'm going to a wedding next month and I plan on spelling out the couple's name or their last name. And I'll have a video up for that probably next week. But I think that this font is great for weddings as well. Okay, so... I'm kind of just laying out all of my leaves. Some of them I cut up so that I can glue them underneath the letters. Some um, on the bottom and top. I left one leaf in completely intact and I glued that one over to the right side. And I thought this was very pretty. Even just as is right now. And maybe you can just embellish with a couple gold jewels or something but I'm going to add my little daisies but first I really like the placement of the letters I'm gonna go ahead and glue everything down I am eyeballing everything just trying to be careful that I don't start gluing things crooked All right, so I'm just finishing up my last couple letters and then I'll start to form my flowers again using the palm of my hand. And since I had so many left over, I triple layered these ones. They're also a little bit smaller than the ones I made for the pink card. Okay, and so instead of using the centers from the die, I thought it would be fun to use some gold pearls by Lucy's Cards. Again, this is a nice match to the matte gold foil that I used. I like how these look, so I'll go ahead and glue them down, giving them one last pinch in my palm to lift those petals up. I have a few gold butterflies left, so I decided to add them to the card. And then all I'm going to do is embellish some of the empty space with some more pearls. Now I thought I was going to go with the gold, but I thought it looked a little bit too shiny. So I'm going to play around with one more flower, I'll add one more. And then I have a couple gems and pearls in my stash. I found two that matched the colors that I used really well, so I'm going to use those two to fill in any open areas. And then that will pretty much complete my second card. I'm attaching them all down with my art glitter glue. 
Then I'll flip this panel around, add some ATG tape, and adhere it to my white slimline card base. So that is going to complete my second card. Let me know which card you like more. I personally love the design of this one more, but pink is my favorite color, so I would have to choose the first one. But thank you all for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I will be back very soon with another video tutorial. Bye, guys!